In this presentation, we'll take a look at the Plan Commission and tools for recruiting, training, and retaining qualified Plan Commission members. Plan Commission members serve most of Wisconsin's nearly 2,000 towns, cities, villages, and counties. With five to seven members per commission, that means we have nearly 10,000 Plan Commissioners statewide. Most serve three-year terms. However, there are examples of Plan Commissioners serving multi-year terms. Because this is a voluntary position, there's also high turnover, so we estimate nearly a quarter of plan commissioners turn over each year. The plan commission plays an important role in planning and land use decision making. They focus on long-range planning, policy recommendations, including regulation, and review of specific development proposals. They also play an important role in advising the governing body and involving the public. When you are recruiting new plan commission members, you will want to look for someone who is civic-minded, meaning they're willing to serve their community. They should have a knowledge or interest in planning and related fields, or at least be open to new ideas and willing to learn. They should also be a critical and objective thinker, meaning they are able to read maps, assess proposals, analyze impacts, and apply standards found in existing plans and ordinances. In addition, they should always maintain the long-range view. If possible, you will want to think about diversity when appointing plan commission members. This could mean demographic diversity, such as age, ethnicity, or gender, diversity in professional background or interests, such as an interest or knowledge of business, environment, agriculture, or law, and physical and geographic diversity. This could follow jurisdictional boundaries, neighborhoods, natural resource areas, or other community issues. Finding an individual with your desired characteristics and a desire to serve can be challenging. Most communities find that personal recruitment is the best tool. Beyond this, many communities have developed application or nomination forms that they will place in community newsletters, newspapers, and other written forms of communication. It's also really important to describe what the job entails and what your expectations are. This could be describing the roles and responsibilities of the plan commission, the frequency length, location of meetings, and length of service. Once you have new commissioners on board, you will want to provide them with the welcome packet, once again explaining their roles and responsibilities. Make sure each member is well equipped to handle the responsibilities of their position. Make sure they have a copy of local plans, ordinances, maps, and decision forms. Also continue to budget for training and other materials to build commissioner capacity. There are many things you can do to ensure that plan commission meetings are productive and that plan commissioners do not get frustrated. First, establish ground rules for the conduct of meetings and hearings. Also provide commissioners with an agenda and background materials so that they can review these materials in advance and make more informed decisions. Lastly, appoint a chairperson who can guide meetings and keep members on track. Recognize commissioners' hard work and dedication. You can do this by providing a small stipend or per diem for attending meetings, by recognizing the plan commission verbally or in writing, such as in a community newsletter, hosting an annual potluck or awards banquet, and also just by simply being a role model, by working hard and exhibiting positive behavior. Likely, they will follow your lead. Once you have established a well-functioning plan commission, there are many things you can do to keep it functioning and to recruit new members. First, appoint alternates to serve on your plan commission. They can serve when regular members are not available, and this also serves as a good training opportunity for future commission members. You can also establish advisory committees. They can help the plan commission work on specific topics, and this provides an effective means to delegate work and prevent burnout. Lastly, provide training and networking opportunities. The Center for Land Use Education provides a variety of training materials to recruit, train, and retain plan commission members. This includes their plan commission handbook, downloadable forms, online presentation materials, and in-person workshops. Please visit our website if you would like to learn more. Here are some of the materials you will find on our website. A sample job description and application form. Sample rules of procedure. This can be used to address procedural issues not otherwise addressed by state statutes, local ordinances, or case law. For example, appointment of alternates or non-voting members, quorum, rules for handling ex parte communication, conflicts of interest, etc., and expectations regarding attendance and voting. There are also example guides, checklists, and forms taken from real Wisconsin communities. Lastly, there are sample decision forms. These are available in Microsoft Word format, so you can take them and modify them to fit your community. 
Thanks for listening in. If you have questions, please feel free to contact me, Becky Roberts, or visit our website at the Center for Land Use Education. Thank you.